junior middleweight, your referee from Orlando, Florida, Victor Perez. Introducing first in the corner to my left, wearing white trunks, red trim, weighing 156 pounds, from Muncie, Indiana, ranked number 10 in the world by the Bible of Boxing Ring Magazine, Gary Guyton. Mugabe's last fight telecast here on NBC. A first round knockout of Roosevelt oh, Green. John Jay, I know that. 134 round one. Up. Up. And it's Las Vegas. Tied up. Watch out for the head stuff. No holding you back in there. Take care of that from a box in the bell ring. Any questions? Instructions from the referee, Victor Perez out of Orlando. Gary Guyton has been a slow starter, something as trainer Chris McIntosh looking to change against the quick-starting John Mugabe. Well, he sure started quick just then. He ran across the ring. <laughs> Guyton not wasting a moment's time. He got hit with a flush right hand by Mugabe. Grab on Mugabe despite that impressive record. Questions asked, who are those people that he has beaten? They came in here with a 15-0 record. Last time he fought, they told us he had an 18-0 record. <laughs> and it's been discovered at the World Boxing Association don't permit lions and uh, leopards in yeah. the ratings. 15 humans he's knocked up. Jabo Gabi calls himself the beast, using the nickname affectionately. Power puncher, now living in London, England, out of Uganda. Won the 1980 Olympic silver medal in Moscow. His last defeat took place as an amateur. Fighting for the gold in Moscow. Losing to Antonius Aldama of Cuba. In 1976, it was Sugar Ray Leonard victorious over Aldama to win the gold in Montreal. He had over 200 amateur fights. They started out real fast. Now they're settling down to try to figure each other out. No uh, one-punch heroic. Uh, at the beginning, opening part of this round. Uh, Gary Guyton has been knocked out four times. And it's all oh, good. Right and, and it does not look like Guyton wants anymore. Mugabe doesn't rule. I don't believe it. Can you believe it? Mugabe couldn't. I'm not sure whether it was gentlemanly action or he was looking for the standing eight, which is in effect here in Tampa. Buy a new car. You want to keep it looking new. And this is round two. John Mugabe appears to have Gary Guyton put away in round one. We have Mugabe's manager trainer here.
one more time in this round, and it'll be all over. Gary Geis has been put down twice in the second round. I was about to ask the manager trainer of Mugabe, Mickey Duff, why did Mugabe move away from Geis after he had him stunned and virtually out in round one, but we better stay with the action here in the second round. Geis makes his recovery between those put downs, and I don't understand what what kind of recuperative powers he has. He goes down so badly, he doesn't look like he's going to get up, then he gets up and punches hard. He's going to try to catch Mugabe just in a careless position since Mugabe is just so in charge of this fight. Oh. And Geis is back with the combination. up to restraint. All right, we're getting set for round three. It has been a devastating performance by John Mugabe that last uh, round, and I'm keeping the, uh, the stopwatch a good 15 to 20 seconds too long. Dyden was put down twice. In round two now, Mugabe's manager, Mickey Duff, is with us. What happened in the uh, first round? Why did Mugabe walk away from Guyton when he obviously had him in big trouble? I have a feeling he didn't want to win in the first round in case the public didn't see enough of him. It happened when the last time he was on television. Wait a moment. <laughs> you got it, Mickey. Yeah, that's now, reaching all the way across now, the Atlantic. Now, one of those wonderful now, Mickey Duff experiences. I'm really not kidding. I said to him, I don't want you to win too early, even if you get the chance, because... I want the people to see that you can fight. Well, they've certainly seen that, but you know what? He's taking some kind of shots from Guyton in the second round. Now, I don't agree. I, I think he's been riding most of them. If you'll find, you'll see Guyton throwing a lot of punches, but he's getting his head down. He's not getting caught clean. So far, anyway. Is it possible that uh, you and he have a share of the commercial time on NBC? Just want to see additional commercial? Not at all possible. I, I'm concerned with him winning. Mugabe with a uh, unique celebration. Well, John Mugabe showed us he could punch in Las Vegas. He certainly reaffirmed it in Tampa, and you got to start thinking about him you know as a real contender. Well, Mickey Duff said he wanted the American public to see more of him, so he did extend it to the third round. That is the Mickey Duff uh, point of view. John Mugabe. And here we are. Making it six. And oh, all 16 by knockout. And uh, this, the first bout where I think people will start to take him seriously. Gary Guyton, some say, at the end of the trail, as you uh, take a look at the assault by Mugabe here in round three, putting Guyton down twice. And uh, this, the finisher. Some say Guyton is at the end of the trail, perhaps punctuated by 
lost the knockout at the hands of Davey Moore in a title fight last January, but still Guyton has been around, experienced fighter, coming in at 39 and 6, 35 by knockout, and a convincing, easy victory for Mugabe. John Mugabe, 21 years old, out of Uganda, living in London, England. Very impressive. All right, let's get the official time. We'll go to the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, the time, one minute, 35 seconds of the third round. The winner by technical knockout and still undefeated, John Mugabe. Mugabe. 1.35. Round three, John Mugabe stopping. Gary Guyton will be back right after these words. Worth protecting. Make a love life to the winners this time, huh? Now in the duel of the disposed planet. Try the disposable that beats them both. The new Chick Disposable. Marv Albert, Ferdy Pacheco back in Tampa, Florida. We'll have more boxing coming up a bit later on. Middleweight's uh, Don Lee and Guy Kennedy. Dangerous Don Lee with a record of 15 and 1. All 15 by knockout. But on the subject of knockouts, moments ago, it was John Mugabe making it 16 and 0. All 16 by KO. Again, a, a quickie knockout for Mugabe. He stopped the veteran Gary Guyton at 135 of round 3 in an impressive performance. Let's Let's go to the ring. Here's Ferdy along with Mugabe and his manager, Mickey Dove. John, congratulations. Very fast night in, in Tampa here. Uh, why did you leave him alone in the first round? You hit him a shot. He straightened up. He looked like he was knocked out. Yeah. Why did you leave him alone? Yeah, because my manager told me, you know, to turn, you know, keep on wearing him. Then, then I go back to him and I knock him out. Well, you've given us very short fights, John. One of these days, you're going to have to get in a longer fight than one round. Yeah. Well... Nonetheless, with an impressive win like that, Mickey, you must be very happy. Mickey Duff, the uh, manager of Mugabe, as well as Bose Edwards. I'm delighted, but I'm not surprised. He is the best fighter I've ever been involved with. He has now served his apprenticeship. He's had 16 fights. He's got 16 knockouts. And he's ready to box any light middleweight, any super welterweight, junior middleweight in the world. That includes Thomas Hearns, Roberto Duran, or anybody in the top ten in either division that wants a shot. He will now be in the top ten, I'm sure, because he was in number 11 today. But anybody in the top ten that wants a shot, there is nobody barred. We are not picking opponents. Anybody that's rated what? by the WBC, WBA, Ring Magazine, USABI, anybody can have Mickey, a shot. Mickey, why do you have such lack of confidence in your fighter? <laughs> to a man who have a great deal of confidence, back to Marv Albert at ringside. All right, Ferdy, and we will have more boxing upcoming shortly. Metalweights Don Lee and Guy Kennedy about that took place earlier, an action-packed fight, and we will show that to you in just a few moments. John Mugabe carrying it from the crowd as he departs and heads back to the dressing room, coming up with his 16th knockout to make it a record of 16-0, and 0, stopping Gary Guyton in round three. Right now, we're set for this week's edition of Inside Ringside. A look behind the scenes in the world of boxing. And on today's Inside Ringside, a quote to the draw. But earlier here in Tampa, a no question about an outcome at our main event when John Mugabe, the 21-year-old out of Uganda, now living in London, England, stopped the veteran Gary Guyton in round three. Four knockdowns in the bout. And Mugabe is now 16-0, and 0, all 16 by knockout, and 30, most of them have been early. 
Yes, and I think the boxing fraternity is very excited about uh, Mugabe. I certainly am. Anytime you see a fighter come out of the box like that, 16 starts, 16 defeats, especially this last one. Gaiden is a reputable opponent. He's up there in the top 10. I think there's no question that Mugabe will now be in the top 10. And you've heard Mickey Duff in the uh, last interview. He's ready to take on the yeah. world. <laughs> he's ready to take on the German army. How far advanced is Mugabe at this stage? I think he's well advanced. When you can punch like that and you're a beast like he is, you're advanced. All right, Marv Albert with the fight. Dr. Ferdy Pacheco saying so long from Tampa. Those are the two fighters, the Beast and the Savage. First of all, John Mugabe is coming off the, the big win over Gary Guyton. Mugabe out of Uganda, 16-0, 16 knockouts, and tonight goes up against Jeff Nelson. Well, I, I kind of knock out the uh, Guyton fight out because Guyton got a, a habit of getting knocked down pretty easily by everybody, so... I'm looking forward to seeing the fight Jeff Nelson to see how he reacts when he gets hit. And in our co-main event, we have a featherweight who has more than a feathery touch. Richard Savage is going tonight 17-0, 13 knockouts, and he has a pretty good test from Ruben Arasame this evening. Well, Ruben Arasame is going to actually... This is the USA Cable Network. It is buzzing at the Hyatt Regency in Tampa, Florida. USA Network presents Friday Night Boxing, and we are ready to go with our first fight, our co-main event. And so let's quickly go into the ring, and here is ring announcer Mark Biedel. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the beautiful Hyatt Regency Ballroom located in downtown Tampa for another evening of all-star professional boxing. Under the promotion of Alessi Promotions, your matchmakers are Ken Rosenberg and Brad Jacobs. Tonight's bouts are under the sanction of the Tampa Boxing Commission, Chairman Colonel George Porter, Vice Chairman Jack Salowitz. All bouts are scored under a 10-point must system, three knockdown rule in effect. Ring officials assigned by the Tampa Boxing Commission. Your ringside physicians are Dr. Moses A. Chartkoff, Dr. Dave Dillenbach, Dr. Rodolfo Eichberg, Dr. Jack Giugino, and Dr. Roberto Saran. Your judges at ringside are Tom Brown, Pete Valiente, and John Manoni. Your timekeeper tonight is Billy Harold counting for the knockdowns at the bell, Red Van Linder. Alessi Promotions presents the first of two main events this evening, 10 rounds, junior middleweight. Your referee from Sanford, Florida, Victor Perez. <laughs> Introducing first in the red corner to my left, wearing black trunks, white trim, Weighing 156 and a half pounds from Miami, Florida. Professional record, 13 wins, two defeats. Jeff Nelson. Nelson. His opponent wearing the white trunks, black trim, weighing 156 and a quarter pounds from Kampala, Uganda, and now London, England. His professional record, 16 wins, no defeats, 16 knockouts, currently ranked number eight in the world by the Bible of Boxing Ring Magazine, John the Beast Mugabe. Mugabe, 10 round junior middleweight. Oh. Okay, both boys have been advised of the rules of the Tampa Bay Boxing Commission. I'll let you fight inside. Watch the headbutts, watch the low punches. I'll let you fight inside till one man is tied up. All right, take care now. Come on, boxing the bell ring. Tell of the tape is uh, you see Mugabe and Nelson both weigh in at 156. Mugabe has just the inch height advantage, three inch reach. And we should see an explosive fight. Round Mugabe one, on the threshold of very big things. 16 and 0, 16 KO'd. He is a slugger with a brick light right. 
And Jeff Nelson comes into this fight on very short notice, was contacted and agreed to the fight at 9 a.m. this morning. Jeff Nelson has very quick hands, and McGobby better not wind up with him because he's liable to wind up getting nailed himself. And Nelson in the black cross likes to stand in and bang away, which could create some good action in this one. The only bad thing I don't like about Jeff Nelson, he's got a real 10 cent mouthpiece in his mouth, and he may get his mouth all busted up early on. Al De La Rosa was originally the opponent for John Mugabe, but he dropped out of the fight and left Mugabe without an opponent until 9 a.m. this morning when Nelson was contacted and now coming up here with a 13-2 record, including a victory over the former junior middleweight champion, Elijah Oben. So he steps in and now looks for the big upset against Mugabe in the white. You know, a kid like Jeff Nelson, a spot like this, just what he's looking for. Because if he can get lucky with him, he circumvents a lot of trouble. A lot of take too many fights to make everybody know who Jeff Nelson is. Well, Mugabe at this point is talking in terms of names of turns. Duran, Benitez, looking to move up in the junior middleweight division. He is now ranked eighth. According to Ring Magazine, his last two fights, extremely impressive. The third round knockout of Gary Guyton, and before that, took out Roosevelt Green at 120 the first round. Green, who has never hit the canvas before. Who got me with that right? He's hurt. There is the right that did him Guyton. Guyton went down four times in three rounds. And there is a left. First round action as Mugabe has Nelson kicking away and in trouble here in round number one. Just Nelson is out of it. He took a stiff right, still standing, as Mugabe looking in, stalking. Victor Taco Perez, the referee. Just Nelson, a very game young man staying in there. Mugabe, a junior middleweight. But his trainer, George Francis, says he has the strength of a heavyweight. You can see the way he is built. 5'8 and 156. Solid. Al, you see the courage of Jeff Nelson, the way he's staying in there and trying for such a big opportunity. And Mugabe is sent to the road. And we will be back with more Friday Night Boxing from Tampa after these words from our local cable system. A double play. Anyone who pitches for a living loves a beautifully turned twin killing. Hi, this is Tom Seaver for the Sporting News, and we have a twin killing for you. Two issues for the price of one to introduce you to the Sporting News, the Sports Bible. That's right, you'll get 26 issues of the Sporting News for just $9.99. Two for the price of one. And you can't buy the Sporting News for a lower price anywhere. It's the magazine that gives me the no-nonsense details of all Major League Sports and college action. To love sports is to love the Sporting News, the Sports Bible. Why don't you subscribe today and here's a friend to tell you how. That's right, Tom. You get the Sporting News at the low rate of just 39 cents an issue. 26 issues for $9.99. That's half the regular subscription price. Call toll-free 1-800-USA-1000. In Georgia, 1-800-222-7272. That's 1-800-USA-1000. In Georgia, call 1-800-222-7272. Scheduled 10 rounders, junior middleweights. We head into the second round. John Mugabe in the white trunk. Jeff Nelson in the black trunk. Mugabe ran right into a good right hand himself. He was all balanced when he got hurt, when he got hit with that punch. Now, you can never take nothing for granted. Now, Porter Rowe working on Jeff Nelson in the corner, telling him, move, move. That's what he's got to do. Well, he was moved he there, down to the canvas. The man broke his ankle. Well, he pops back up. A solid punch by John Mugabe. Mugabe, who's an excellent counter puncher, now moves in on Nelson. Doesn't look to counter right now. A big left, followed by a right. I think something's wrong with Jeff Nelson's leg. Nelson down for the second time. And for the second time, he pops back up. There is a lot of this round to go. Two minutes still remaining in this second round. As Mugabe tries to throw a forward pass. 
Tries to throw Nelson for the forward pass. Nelson was in trouble in the first round, and he responded by stunning Mugabe. Remarkable him getting up. He wants to win this fight so bad, Jeff Nelson, and he's trying with everything he's got. But I don't think he has the firepower for Mugabe. Mugabe, a silver medal winner in the 1980 Olympics in Moscow, went to the finals against a Cuban opponent, and he feels that's the reason he lost. See that cheap mouthpiece out? His mouth is all busted up. That's that what I'm Nelson. concerned about. Jeff Nelson. The blood now coming from the mouth of Jeff Nelson, who has been down twice in this second round. Nelson 13-2. Recent victory over Elijah Obeb, the former junior middleweight champion. He also defeated Kel Robbins. Now, Jeff Nelson, before this fight, you must realize he's been a winning fighter. He beat some really good fighters. So he's in there with the best puncher around in the top. Nelson comes in 13 and 2. Mugabe quickly putting Nelson down at the start of the second round. He was down twice in the matter of a minute. 30 seconds to go in round number two. And Nelson stumbles to the canvas for the third time. Four, five, six, seven. If he gets eight, up, he may survive. And that is it. Mugabe makes sure Nelson does not go down again. So John Mugabe has come up with a second round knockout over Jeff Nelson. He extends his undefeated record to 17-0, and, and it is the 17th victory by KO. Jeff Nelson, who came into this fight on very short notice, 9 a.m. this morning, he became the opponent of John Mugabe. And right now, a little past 9 p.m., he has become a victim of Mugabe. Great display of courage on Jeff Nelson's part. He really wanted it badly. But Mugabe has too much firepower for the young man. So the beast remains undefeated. And we'll take a look again at some action as this one does not go two rounds. Mugabe lands that left hook and backs up Nelson. Well, I thought he broke his leg there. I really feel good about it now he's walking around. That was the first knockdown. And this is the one that concluded this fight. Nelson has been down two times, and he is rocked. One for good measure by Mugabe, not that it was necessary. So Mugabe, who is from Uganda, living in London now under the uh, guidance of manager Mickey Duff and trainer George Francis, uh, now here in Tampa, he's staying with the Ugandan family. Feels very much at home here in Tampa. And he is the victor. And let's go to the ring and Mark Piedon. Ladies and gentlemen, the time, 2 minutes, 47 seconds of the second round. The three knockdown rule in effect. The winner by technical knockout and still undefeated, John Mugabe. for the courageous Jeff Nelson. The hand for Jeff Nelson as he loses his third of 16 fights. Mugabe wins one more. We'll be back with more Friday Night Boxing right after these words from our local cable system. If you think diamonds... A little quick promotion for feisty, scary John Mugabe. 18 and 0. Friday Night Boxing was brought to you in part by Mobile One, the oil that saves you gas and more. By Toyota, who reminds you that it's a good feeling to buckle up for safety. And by Levi's Menswear, the makers of Levi's Action Slacks. The
executive producer of USA Sports is Jim Shray. Friday Night Boxing was produced by Elliot Warner. Directed by James Alexander. The associate producer, Kevin Landy. Associate director, Manny Cruz. Executive in charge of production is Dick Ross and our production coordinator, Barbara Travers. Wait, John Mugabe looks to blast his way past the KG Don Morgan. USA's Friday Night Boxing. It's a hit. Live at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 Pacific. Next. Saturday, Night Flight takes off with men at work. Then the old deep purple has become the new lifespan at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on USA tomorrow. This is the USA Cable Network. He is a 156-pound junior middleweight known as The Beast. Undefeated Ugandan John Mugabe has run his record to 17-0, all via the knockout. In his last bout in Tampa, seen on USA, he floored Jeff Nelson twice in the second round before the fight was finally stopped. An aggressive puncher with the body of a heavyweight, he is currently ranked number seven and looking for more. He'll find it in our main event, USA's Friday Night Boxing, is next. From the Hyatt Regency Hotel in Tampa, Florida, USA Network presents Friday Night Boxing. Friday Night Boxing is brought to you by Mobile Detergent Gasoline for your everyday driving needs. By Toyota, who reminds you that it's a good feeling to buckle up for safety. By Levi's jeans, cords, and shirts for quality and style you can count on. And by Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Life, it doesn't get any better than this. Steel and glass have never been so comfortable. We've checked into the glittering Hyatt Regency Hotel in downtown Tampa on Florida's Gulf Coast. This stairway takes you to the Regency Ballroom, and all the boxes here are hopeful that this is a symbol that they are on their way up. And this is the Hyatt Regency Ballroom as what has become a social tradition in Tampa, the Friday night fights once a month continues. John the Beast Mugabe, a world-ranked junior middleweight, has had a big problem this week, his weight. Yesterday he was seven pounds over. He lost it today, but it has meant no room service for the great Ugandan. I'm Al Troutwick, along with the editor of Boxing Illustrated, Randy Gordon. And Randy, I wonder whether he's taken this fight too lightly. Al, it's no secret among the boxing community that to get John Mugabe into a gym is like getting a cat to jump into a pool. He just doesn't want to go near the gym. Now, the fight we're talking about is our main event tonight, John Mugabe against Don Morgan. Before we talk about Morgan, let's talk about Mugabe and his great skills. Well, he has incredible hand speed, and with, and not just incredible hand speed, incredible power. With either hand, he can take a guy out one single shot. And he's had 17 fights, won them all, all by knockout. He has great punching power and can be a very exciting boxer to watch. Now, this is part of the plan to get Mugabe a title shot in January. They hope to have one more bout in November, but first, they want to do this one. And one of the things, or three of the things, that Morgan gives Mugabe is height in an opponent, distance in an opponent, and good punching power. Well, when you're talking about Tommy Hearns, Mugabe has his sights on Tommy Hearns, so they got this tall kind of opponent in Don Morgan. But he's been a professional now, 10 years. He's been in with some of the best in the business, some real hard punches himself, welterweight Bobby Joe Young, and the very hard-hitting Earl Hargrove, a junior middleweight who's 23-0 and with all knockouts. Don Morgan told us he came here tonight for more than a payday. And if he had done any less than that, we would be greatly disappointed. That will be our main event coming up later. And our first... When we return on USA, the main event. Seventh ranked junior middleweight, John Mugabe, against Don Morgan, a man who says, I came to win. 
The Wall Street Journal... 37 cents a day. Phone 800-USA-1000 now. We're standing by at the Regency Ballroom for our junior middleweight main event. Scheduled for 10 rounds, John Mugabe against Don Morgan. Mugabe, the heavy favorite with a lot to lose. Our main event coming up in just a moment. But first, we go to ring announcer Mark Biro. Ladies and gentlemen, Alessi Promotions presents the main event of the evening, 10 rounds, junior middleweight. Your referee once again is Max Parker, Jr. Introducing first in the corner to my left, wearing the pink trunks, white trim, weighing 150 pounds from Nashville, Tennessee, a Nashville knockout boxing team member with a professional record, 31 victories, 19 defeats, 19 knockouts, Don Morgan. Morgan. His opponent wearing the white trunks with black trim, weighing 155 pounds from Kampala, Uganda, and London, England. A professional record, undefeated in 17 bouts with 17 knockouts. Ranked number seven in the world by the Bible of Boxing Ring Magazine, John the Beast Mugabe. Mugabe. Ten rounds, junior middleweight. In case the ears are not down, the box stand will be direct. The fight is neutral for around me. You remain there. In the clinches, the hands are free. I will give you an instruction to punch out. If not, I will give you the command to break. You will break by not throwing the punch and taking the step back. Protect yourself all the time with your both luck, touch glove, for my box time bell. Once again, Max Parker Jr. tells these two fighters what he expects. Mugabe is 23, Morgan is 31. The weight for Mugabe, 155, and he had a struggle to get to that point. The height, 5'11", 3 inch advantage for Don Morgan. Scheduled for 10 rounds, Mugabe and Morgan. Once again, after just watching the demise of Guzman after his weight loss campaign, we mentioned Mugabe had to lose seven after yesterday. And an up and down weight problem that began after his arrival here in Tampa on Monday. Let's keep an eye on John Mugabe. He starts out, he's had six first round knockouts. He starts every fight like a hurricane hitting shore. He hurt Morgan already. Mugabe has a lot of power in his punches. Morgan in the pink, Mugabe in the white. I don't like when Morgan's holding that left hand. If he insists on keeping it right there, this fight is not going to go past round one. Now Morgan's strategy, I believe Randy Gordon was to last through rounds one, two, three, and four, hopefully. Not on the ropes, he's not going to do it. No, I don't think so. Mugabe with a hard right. There it is, over that low-held left hand, over and over again. I can't see Morgan getting out of this round by doing that. Mugabe is a man who does not want this night to last any longer than it has to. I mean, macho is one thing, but the left Mugabe hit you on the chin is insane. And again. Up, oh, there we go. Oh, we saw it, and it's going to happen again. He'll get up. Yeah, he, ripped, he waved his hand like it's nothing, but he's hurt bad. This fight will not get out of round number one. Don Morgan in trouble and in trouble early. With a mediocre record of 31 and 19, it was hoped that Morgan would provide a tall opponent that would send Mugabe to the distance. He's never been beyond the sixth round. As I read in one newspaper today, he doesn't even know what a seven round looks like. But I don't know. I don't think Morgan is going to fulfill his promise. I'm impressed with the punching power of John Mugabe. But I've yet to really see him box oh. and be in trouble. Oh, body and then a headshot by Mugabe. Morgan stunned again. Oh, my dream matchup is to take Mugabe and put him in with Philadelphia's unbeaten 23-0, 23 knockout Earl Hargrove. Although I'm conceding this fight already. It's like I'm saying it's over. Morgan, Morgan is down and out. 
another guy just hit his head flush on that canvas. He's in bad shape. Boy, did Mugabe unleash a killer punch. It is over. The doctors are in the ring. John Mugabe, a winner in the first round. Well, he certainly can punch. The Beast. Whoever devised the fight plan for Don Morgan by telling him to hold his hand at his left side should be in prison. Well, the question marks are still out of Mugabe. We know he can punch. Well, the, the, weight, the weight loss really hurt him, didn't it? Oh, really hurt him. <laughs> I really wish this had gone a number of rounds because Don Morgan does have stamina. He does have some skill. But it was that first right hand that caught him early in the round and sent him down. He never recovered from it. In fact, he got hit with the right hand before that that hurt him, which set him up for that first knockdown. Morgan, a very likable guy, very soft-spoken. Folks are watching back in Nashville, Tennessee. Kind of guy, after you talk with him, you, you almost have to root for him, but he didn't have a chance in this fight. Not after tasting that first right hand. I wonder what would happen if the likes of Roberto Duran or... Tommy Hearns got hit on the chin by those bombs. Okay, now the plan for Mugabe is what? They'd like to get him another fight. They want him to get more work because they just know he's not going to do the same thing to Hearns. Although if he hits him on the chin, you never know. They want him to get rounds first because against Tommy Hearns, you've got to go a long distance. Dr. Ferdy Pacheco just came over to me and put down in front of me right here in this building, I believe it is, November 7th, Curtis Parker against John Mugabe, World War III. Here comes knockdown number one. Bing, the big right hand, and Don Morgan falls apart in sections. Here's the finisher. And it's a crunching right hand again. He was getting hit with them all around long, and as he went down, he smashes his face on the canvas, just about left his face print in the canvas, and it was all over. Before the referee could count to the, give him the 10 count, the doctors and the officials were in the ring. That's a different angle, a different look at the final flurry of blows, the right hand, which ended Don Morgan's evening and upped John Mugabe's record to 18 wins, all by knockout. I don't know what was louder, the thud on Morgan's chin or the thud of Morgan hitting the canvas. Mugabe now 18 knockouts, and we go to Mark Biro for the official announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, the time, 2 minutes, 11 seconds of the first round by a knockout, his 18th in as many fights, John the Beast Mugabe. Mugabe. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. Your attention please. I have been informed that Mr. Mugabe will be again here in Tampa on November the 12th and he is signed to fight Curtis Parker. That's at the Sun Dome in Tampa, John Mugabe. A little quick promotion for feisty, scary John Mugabe. The cycle racing and boxing. We have boxing upcoming in about a half hour from now. Knockout artist John Mugabe, a record of 19-0, all 19 by knockout, facing his toughest test in going up against Curtis Parker. And as always, I'm joined here at ringside by the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. Ferdy, how do you assess this bout? Well, really, it's a fight of two halves. The first half belongs to John Mugabe. He wants to go out and knock out Curtis Parker in a hurry because he's never had to go the distance. On the other hand, the second half belongs to Parker, who fights much better between round five and ten when his incredible consistency and stamina takes the play out of his opponent. Can Mugabe knock him out early, or will he be around for the decision in ten? It's an interesting matchup. All right, and the story on Mugabe throughout his career has been a cavalcade of knockouts. Last May in Las Vegas, Mugabe putting away Roosevelt Green in round one. Green taken right out. This past July here in Tampa, Mugabe stopping the veteran Gary Guyton in round three. And last month in Atlantic City, easy win for Mugabe against Eddie Gazzo, this time a fourth round conclusion. And today, Mugabe faces a man who relies on a swanning attack, Curtis Parker. I feel as though Curtis Parker has a chance anywhere. Uh, like I am, I'm, uh, I'm a believer in God. I have faith in myself. I'm a doer. I'm a survivor. And that's what counts. And now, let's go to Paul Page in Silverstone, England.
Barry Holmes and Marvis Frazier on Friday night, November the 25th. And we'll be back with more Sports World in a moment. Introducing the... We'll be back with more British motorcycle racing in a moment, followed by boxing from Tampa, John Mugabe and Curtis Parker. But right now, let's go to our NFL 83 studio. Uh, because Parker's disadvantage, however fine a middleweight he was, he's always fighting huge guys, much bigger guys like Dwight Davidson who towered over him. Now he's got an equal size opponent and they both punch with great authority. Come on, Mugabe was attempting the stare, but Parker would not have any of it. Uh, looking away, John Mugabe calls himself the Beast and uses the nickname with affection. He's 23 years old, now living in London, England, born in Uganda, and Curtis Parker, 24-year-old, out of Philadelphia, born and raised in Philly, record of 24 and 4, 20 by knockout, and as we mentioned earlier, for Mugabe, his biggest test. Parker has been in there with more credible opponents. He did lose twice to Mustafa Hamcho, lost in a war to Wilfred Scipion. They are throwing some heavy punches, very heavy punches by Curtis Parker as far as the body attack is concerned. That will certainly tell a toe if he's around in the fourth or fifth round. And Parker's trademark has... Oh, he got hit by the left hand of Mugabe. And he's pushed down. That is not a knockdown. That Parker is. usually does start very fast and likes to swarm all over his opponent. And certainly Mugabe is the same. He likes to get out of here fast. A lot of tension right here between these two fighters, and the audience is coming up to this slugfest. Combination by Parker. If there was ever a definition of toe-to-toe, -to -toe, you just saw it. Curtis Parker has never been down, never been knocked out, and yet he faces a man that is pummeling him. Halfway through, round one, scheduled for ten. Oh, another good right hand by John Mugabe. Curtis Parker's going to have to decide to abandon that body attack every time he goes to the body. Mugabe sounds his gong with a good right hand. what's holding up Curtis Parker. No one has ever withstood that punch before. He has no leg. He's trying to shake it off. Out of 45 seconds left. Curtis Parker has no legs left. Mugabe mistakenly walked away thinking he had been given a standing eight count. And there's no standing eight. That was a push. Look out. Look out. And very wisely, the referee, Max Parker Jr., able to get in. There is no standing eight here in Tampa. And that is the first knockdown of the bout. And Parker looking to shake it off. That's he, time remaining in the round. He can't go on. He cannot go on. He cannot go on. Agabi is poised. The referee is letting it continue. Yes, he did. He fell out. He's waved it off. Okay, he's obviously over. out on his feet. Or, in this case, out on his backside. John Mugabe. First round knockout. Looks to be some indecision by Max Parker, Jr. And I'm wondering if the uh, outpouring into the ring was what stopped this bell. I don't think Parker could have gotten back in. He just barely got up after the first knockdown. I don't really think he could have continued anyway. He didn't respond to, to questions, didn't open his mouth and say a word. I don't know why they let it continue. However, he is now saying, why did they stop it? That's right. Nothing was clearly indicated. I agree with your point that Parker could not have continued, but there was no clear-cut 
indication. All right, here's one of the early flurries by Mugabe, the left hand, to send Parker to the ropes. Now watch this right hand of Mugabe is lethal. He has been landing it with force off the jaw of Parker. There it is. No one could take that. And now the finisher. Now this is when he has gotten up. He's in terrible shape. See that right hand? That should have never even landed because the fight should not be continued. He's outside the ropes. He cannot get back in. I agree with you. The referee was weak and indecisive in signaling that the fight was over. He should have been more in command and that no doubt should have been uh, registered in the minds of Parker's corner. So, Curtis Parker, who two years ago was world ranked, moving in the direction of a title shot that he lost to three straight tough, to, tough decisions to Mustafa Hancho or Wilfred Sipion, lost to Dwight Davison, all this within a nine-month period. Lost in a rematch to Hamcho, and then turned it around, but going up against John Mugabe, and it turns out to be not much of a test for the 23-year-old from Uganda, who just continues along his merry way, making it a record of 20 and 0, all 20, oh, and included nearly 200 fights, many against international competition, doing it against Curtis Parker. This considered to be the toughest test for Mugabe. You can certainly look up and down the opponent list of Mugabe and say, hey, who has this guy faced? He did stop Gary Guyton this past summer here in Tampa, and Curtis Parker taking it immediately. And stop the official time, as you just heard, two minutes and 59 seconds of round one. All right, the fight doctor is in the ring, so let's go upstairs. A short and devastatingly quick knockout in the first round. Do you expect him to be that easy? Yeah, and anyway, I've been training, you know, for three, three months. So, you know, I was, you know, determined. You know. I was, you know, wanted to go, I wanted, you know, to knock him out in the first round. George Francis, you've trained this fighter to perfection. He is a devastating machine. Did you expect this easy a victory from your fighter? No, because I know the other guy's a great fighter as well with a good chin. But John is the hardest punching fighter I've had in 35 years. So if he can hit him, he can knock him out. Mickey Duff, who manages the business careers and the career of Mugabe. What do you see in the future of this devastating young man? Well, we're obviously going to have difficulty. I think he should be made number one by the WBC and the WBA for the junior middleweight title. There's no doubt about that. But I can well see both champions being scared to fight him. I've got a great idea. We'll fight Marvin Hagler for the middleweight championship of the world, and I'm not kidding. How about Durant? Duran in a moment. Duran, Thomas Hearns, nobody's barred now. He has answered a lot of questions to us in the last three months in the gymnasium that we've been looking for answers to for a while. Now, for me, if there's anybody around that can beat him, I want to see it. Now, that applies to junior middleweights and middleweights. Well, certainly a challenge to everyone out there who wants to get in with this devastating young man from Uganda. Thank you very much. You've given us another splendid afternoon. Back to Marv Albert at ringside. I want to do All right, Ferdy, the only question concerning John Mugabe, can he take a punch? And to this point, he has not been tested, and that department was not tested here today. Curtis Parker, who won his first 17 professional bouts, 14 by knockout before a string of defeats, turning it around and was looking to use today as a stepping stone to getting right back in it in terms of world ranking, however, was taken out in round one, and Curtis is alongside Ferdy. Curtis, you've given us many a fine afternoon on NBC. This is one of your shortest because you got caught very early by a heavy punching uh, Ugandan named John Mugabe. Do his punches hurt that much? It seemed like it was a straight right hand just wobble you completely. First, I'd like to get honor to God, and uh, how I can't meet I see here, Samika, and my wife Diane. Uh, the thing is that the referee told me to stay down. I actually slipped to the rope. I wasn't, I don't think I was punched to the rope. Yes, he do hit uh, very hard. The thing is that uh, I feel as though it could have went on continuously. The referee told me, I mean, the doctor asked for me to sit there for some reason. 
Well, the reason might be because the time had elapsed, and if you had gotten up and gotten back to the ropes, yeah, we're in danger of getting hurt. Now, nobody wants to see you do that. Not me, not Willie Reddish, not any of us want to see you get hurt. I think he was in command of the bout in the first round. I don't think you had any business getting up because you would have been hurt. It's no uh, slight to get caught in the first round by a great up-and-coming fighter. You've had a great career. You're still going to fight a lot. You uh, had no reason to uh, hurt yourself in a small fight like this in Tampa. Willie, do you agree with that? Yes, uh, yes, Dr. Pacheco, I agree with it. Uh, the referee did right. He, he stopped it. But, but well, we'd like to have a return match. Willie, you want to have a return match? Yes. Willie. 56 pounds. And but as we look back a second time, I thought Curtis tried to come out quickly on Mugabe and was surprised by the power of Mugabe. Yeah, Curtis uh, has had such a, a great career at pounding the body. He's a very finished middleweight fighter. And he wanted to pound the body of Mugabe to get him tired. The problem was he kept getting hit with those sledgehammer right hands. He didn't think Mugabe had that kind of power. After all, no one has knocked down Parker. And he's fought some heavy punches like Dwight Davidson, Scipion, and the top of Ham Show. Now, as we see this fight, you see how fast the trigger reaction of Mugabe is. Almost... As Parker starts to throw a punch, here comes the counterpunch, and they're heavy, and they're lethal. And going into this fight, Mugabe, 19 for 19, but the feeling untested in terms of the caliber of his opponent. The only name opponent on the knockout list, Gary Guyton, stopped in the third round this past July here in Tampa. Well, we have seen him four or five times, Marvin. I must say he was impressive no matter who they put in front of him. He is more impressive to me today. There goes Parker in a lot of trouble. It's a, it's a tribute to his courage and his ring savvy that he stayed up uh, as long as he did because I really thought this was going to be over any time along in here. And Mugabe, an excellent puncher with both hands, always looks for the early knockout and obviously has succeeded in that philosophy, throws a sledgehammer overhand right, and he hurt Parker right from the start. Well, he's superbly conditioned. Everybody said, what if it goes 10? Well, we won't know till he goes 10, but my bet is he'll go 10 good because he's so well conditioned. That right hand is so heavy. Oh. He brings all the excitement of a heavy puncher. knowing that it can end at any second. Makes a fight exciting, and as you see, Parker is just doing his best to remain upright, but is getting pummeled. Now, there was a mistake by Mugabe, ring and experience. He walked away from Parker thinking that the referee had instructed him to walk to neutral corner. And yeah, that was a push down. The difficulty with Mugabe, as you might know, is he doesn't speak any English, or very little English. He doesn't understand instructions very well. And that was a knockout. Now you can see the rocky shape of Curtis Parker. Yeah, had they stopped it here, no one would have really yelled, but it is a major fight for both fighters. Look at Mugabe standing there, just ready to go. He reminds me of Jack Dempsey in the old days. And this is where... Curtis Parker felt he was told to stay down by the uh, the ringside position. He felt he could have gotten up. It's a moot point whether the fight uh, could have continued, but he just felt he was wrong, as he mentioned to you in the, uh, well, the post-fight think... interview, that uh, he was not informed properly. On the ice, they run the, way the up. problem is that's when he first that's when he first heard it. 10 or 15 seconds that elapsed by the time the ringside seconds that elapsed by the time the ringside position. When you get knocked out like that, you, when you come to, you can't believe you have suspended your uh, consciousness, and you think that this went on uninterrupted, and he heard uh, the, the doctor after he had been down. No, I think that was well stopped, Willie. Reddish agreed. Everyone agreed. He should not have gotten up. Uh, that's when the real damage occurs in the ring. This is a sport. This is not life and death. And these are the kind of things that we have to do in boxing. Enforce that. When a fighter's finished, he's finished. It is not a life and death thing. It is the, you're not supposed to hang in there until the guy is just bleeding all over the ring. They stopped it well. I'm glad they stopped it well. And I think uh, Mugabe, for his part, has a brilliant future. What Curtis does, he'll go back to the uh, salt mine and fight all those fights in Atlantic City that he usually does. He's only, what, 24 years old? All right, so Mugabe is now 20-0, all 20 by knockout. And for us, a big month of boxing here on 
NBC next week will be in St. Joseph, Missouri, as James the Heat uh, Kinchin goes up against a veteran by the name of Murray Sutherland, and that is here on NBC. For now, from Tampa, this is Marv Albert, along with the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, saying so long. And the executive producer of NBC Sports is Michael Weissman, the coordinating director of NBC Sports World, who also directed today's... The cycle sidecars. Boxing produced by Peter Rolf. Sports Journal produced by Antoinette McAverna. Today's telecast directed by Bucky Guns. Technical director Sal Aguita and Skip Gresh. Associate directors J.D. Hansen, John Libretto, Joe Michaels. Associate producer Kristen Libretto. Production coordinator Carla Engelman. Next week on Sports World, as we mentioned, a scheduled 10-round middleweight fight featuring a couple of sluggers, James the Heat Kinchin and Murray Sutherland from the Civic Arena in St. Joseph, Missouri. And the world's best bodies boast at the Mr. Olympia Bodybuilding Competition. That'll be all next Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on NBC's Sports World. A promotional fee has been paid. I want him to get him. You have to get him. Right, Dr. Ferdy Pacheco. Mugabe comes in at 24-0. All 24 by knockout. Hargrove, 26 victories, 25 by KO. Who will survive? Well, you got two guys that punch this hard. Whoever hits first could take it all. Boxing is next on Sports World. But right now, let's get back to Bob Costas. So that's our look at the phenomenon of pro wrestling. Now, some of you may be wondering why we haven't posed the age of a promotion. Today, Sports World celebrates St. Patrick's Day with a Donnie Brook of its own. It's undefeated John the Beast Mugabe. He's brought his way through 24 consecutive opponents, all by knockout. Remember Curtis Parker? In November of 83, curtailed in the first. Three months later, James Green gave Mugabe his toughest fight to date until given the red light in the 10th. The Vampire met the Beast last year. Wilbur Johnson bit the dust in the second. And then last August, it was the animal's turn. But Frank Fletcher returned to his den in the fourth. The Beast has not fought in six months, but today Mugabe prowls after a man who possesses 25 knockouts himself. Earl Hargrove, a flashy fighter whose only loss was to IBF champion Mark Vidal, but he suffered a cut over his right eye. The fight was stopped after five furious rounds. Today, these two explosive punchers meet head-to-head -head in a junior middleweight contest. And from Maple Leaf Country, British Columbia, Canada, where the final decision will be rendered in court. That's all today. Our overcast 74 degree day. We are indoors at the Egypt Temple Shrine for this matchup of knockout punchers, John the Beast Mugabe and Earl Hargrove. Hi everybody, I'm Marv Albert with the fight doctor Ferdy Pacheco. Mugabe 24-0, all 24 by knockout. The only time he was severely tested was February of last year when it took him 10 rounds to stop James James Hard Rock Green. Can Hardgrove provide Mugabe with those kind of problems? Those kind and more. Green got Mugabe in trouble but couldn't put him away. He doesn't have the punch to put him away. Hargrove does have the punch. If Mugabe gets in trouble early, look for Hargrove to finish him off. He has a devastating punch. And there is a contrast in styles, although both are devastating uh, knockout punchers. Mugabe, a guy who likes to get right down to business. Hargrove, flashy and can be reckless, and that can certainly be damaging in the ring against the John Mugabe. Mugabe's been studying the films. He sees Har Hargrove's recklessness and his arcing, looping hooks. He plans to step inside of those looping hooks, nail them with straight right hands. And if that happens, we both know Mugabe can get you out with one punch. All right, so Mugabe. Tampa, Florida, Marv Albert with a fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. Coming up later on, Junior Middleweight, John Mugabe and Earl Hargrove, a head-on meeting of explosive knockout artists. John the Beast Mugabe, a devastating puncher, a KO puncher, yet a man of few words. I'll knock, I'll knock him out. 
John the Beast Mugabe first appeared on the pro scene as an undercard fighter of little known origin. It was said that the Beast was from Uganda, Africa, a Maasai warrior whose idea of a good time was hunting wild game with a spear and shield. But after the guidance of manager Mickey Duff, the Beast's taste in natural environment changed to the boxing ring, and his preference in prey became his opponents, none have gone the distance. In fact, many have been curtailed in the early rounds. But wait, has John the Beast Mugabe domesticated his image to John the homeowner Mugabe? Mugabe recently settled into the quiet suburbs of Tampa, Florida, and has taken to the chore of running his humble household. John prides himself on his modern kitchen. His comfortable living room. And his trophy room. Tending his 24, Bill Johnson, 27. For Andy Mill, I'm Greg Lewis. Goodbye. And now, let's go to Len Berman in New York. Thank you, Greg Lewis. On this St. Patrick's Day, the story of Irish Billy Collins, the case of the Tampa... With a little help from the voice of Mel Allen. Young Len Berman comes up to pinch it. Back in Tampa, we are moments away from fight time. John, the Beast Mugabe, and Earl Hargrove getting set to make their way out of their dressing rooms. Earl Hargrove is a 27-year-old out of Philadelphia. His record, 26-1, 25 by knockout. 18 of his knockouts have come within the first two rounds. This one of his tougher tests back in May of 83. As I continue to yell from the corner of King, punch and roll, but they continue to stand there and slug it up. Again, the uppercut by Hargrove. The uppercuts that just don't stop. But last March in Atlantic City, Hargrove's knockout and wind strain came to an end. You know, Marv, when they fight as close as these two guys have, close to each other, they bang heads a lot. It was just a question of time. Who got cut first? For Earl Hargrove, who's put in a... Oh, another great right hand by Medell. And he what? Hargrove... Hargrove after the loss. It was a difficult period as he discussed with Ferdy. Harold, following that shocking defeat by Mark Bedell, you disappeared from the scene for almost a year. Where'd you go? Well, a lot of people was on the wrong for They said, hey, walk from the gym. I haven't really went nowhere. I'm just trying to take a little time to get my business organized. And after I did that, then I came right back in the gym and got ready and I took on a fight just as I came back in the gym. Now that fight you took, in that fight, you did something you'd never done before. You heard the decision of the judges. Now, you've knocked everybody out you fought. Do you think that was a good enough tune-up fight for a fight like John Mugabe? Yeah, for a comeback after my seven months, I think it was a good fight. Give me time to get some of the rust off me. I moon around, I'll get my punches off, my time was good. I think we were real good. When two bangers like you and John the Beast Mugabe get together, someone's got to go. Right, somebody is going to go, and it won't be me. This comes tomorrow, when I take on Johnny Beast Mugabe, I will knock him out, and no doubt, I will do exactly that. And here comes Earl Hargrove, record of 26 and 1, 25 by knockout. His only loss last March, as seen here on NBC, stopped in five rounds by Mark Medal. As Ferdy discussed with Earl the Pearl, his last fight, December 5th here in Tampa, he scored a 10-round decision over Roberto Hernandez. His first non-KO victory, and Hargrove did not have an easy time winning a split decision, not a popular decision, with the crowd. Earl Hargrove in the ring, awaiting the appearance of the Beast. John Mugabe who will have a more celebrated entrance. John the Beast Mugabe, 24 years old, from Uganda, and now living here in Tampa, ranked first among junior middleweights at 154 pounds by the World Boxing Council. Mugabe's last fight, last September, 
in London, moving up to middleweight for that bout. He stopped Nino Gonzalez in the first round. His eighth first round knockout. In fact, 15 of his 24 KOs have come within the first three rounds. Prior, prior to that bout with Gonzalez, he put away Frank the Animal Fletcher in four. That was last August. John McGovey, from a family of six brothers and sisters, raised by his mother. His father was killed in a car accident back in 79. He won the 1980 Olympic silver medal in Moscow, following a spectacular amateur career that began at the age of 12 and included nearly 200 fights, many against international competition. And here comes McGovey. City House here at the Egypt Temple Shrine in Tampa. And this has certainly become Mugabe territory. John Mugabe, the rarest of breeds, the pure knockout puncher. 24 out of 24 for John Mugabe. So the beast is ready. And we'll be back with the fight in just a moment. Try to remember. Welcome back to Tampa, Florida. Marv Albert with the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. What do we have here? Green boxing gloves? Green boxing gloves. The great Irish promoter, Phil Alessi, has chosen green gloves to commemorate St. Patrick's Day. And while on the subject of great Irish gentlemen, we at NBC Sports wish Gil Clancy the best, who's home recovering from hip surgery. It may be the first time in years that Gil has been able to walk the straight and narrow. So from one Irishman to another, Gil Feliz Santo Bernardo. All right, Bernie, on that note, let us get to the ring for the introductions. Here's Mark Biro. Ladies and gentlemen, today's bout under the sanction of the Florida State Athletic Commission, Chairman Bob Shevin, Executive Director Colonel George Porter. Alessi Promotions presents the main event, the K.O. Corral. Ten rounds, junior middleweights. Your referee for this event from Brandon, Florida, Mike Boggs. Introducing first, in the red corner to my left, wearing the yellow lime trunks with navy blue trim, he weighs 154 and three-quarter pounds from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. His professional record, 26 wins, one defeat. He has 25 knockouts, ranked number 10 by the Ring Magazine, Earl the Pearl Hargrove. Hargrove. His opponent, wearing the white trunks with black trim, he weighs 155 pounds from Kampala, Uganda, now making his home in Tampa, Florida. He is in 24 professional bouts, 24 knockouts, the number one ranked junior middleweight in the world, John the Beast Mugabe. Mugabe. The chant for the beast, John Mugabe, in his seventh fight here in Tampa. And here is the stare down between Earl Hargrove and John Mugabe. Of the tape. Shake hands, have a good one. Shake hands. With uh, nothing significant between the two. Earl Hargrove, 27 years old, out of Philadelphia. Record of 26 and 1, 25 by 
knockout. 18 of his KOs have come within the first two rounds, 10 in the opening round, and John Mugabe, 24 and 0, all 24 by knockout. Scoring on the 10-point must, handled by the two judges, and the referee, Mike Bonds, judges Darrell Brown, Rich Carley. The bell does not save the fighter except in the final round. No standing eight, there is a mandatory eight. Three knockdown rule is in effect. Three knockdowns in one round, and the fight is over. And Mugabe getting right down to business. Do not go far from your set. These two guys are throwing everything they got in the first round. seconds in to the opening round and now the knockdown that concluded matters here in round one that was it and it uh, took a good minute and a half before Hargrove was able to uh, with help make it to the school so John the Beast Mugabe, the 24-year-old from Uganda, now living here in Tampa, makes it 25 and all, all 25 by knockout. We'll be back to talk with Mugabe in just a moment. Back in Tampa, the crowd is still buzzing as John Mugabe. Pose, uh, I should say, stop Earl Hargrove in the opening round. And the crowd responding to John the Beast Mugabe. One fifty-three. the time of the knockout in round one. Let's go to the ring. Here's the fight doctor. John, didn't seem like it was worth all the trouble to train that hard. Yeah, because you know, I came to fight. You know, I was in the good shape. 
You seem to be wild and reckless at the end, looking for a knockout. Yeah, because you know the guy, the guy came on me bad, so I get take my chance to knock him out. Well, you did knock him out like you usually do in the first round. Were you surprised how yeah. fast you got rid of him? Yeah, I was cool. I just said cool. I knew it's the longer even a minute, a minute, the all time. I knew I'm gonna knock him out. The crowd has yeah. been chanting here. We want Hearns. We want Hearns. Do you want Hearns or do you oh, want Hagler? I want Hearns very bad for this moment. I think I want to fight Hearns. I'm ready. Oh, Hagler. Oh, Hagler. Be, Mickey Duff, the manager that has guided uh, John Mugabe's career, would you like to have Hagler? Would you like to have Hearns? I think the real contender for the junior middleweight and the middleweight championship of the world is John Mugabe. We're ready to fight the winner. Very well. From a great victory by John Mugabe in Tampa, Florida. We go back to ringside at Marv Albert. All right, Ferdy, they've just corrected the official time of that uh, knockout. 133 of round one. Mugabe stopping Hargrove. Now, also on today's card, Cornelius Boza Edwards went up against Gary Campbell in a lightweight bout. And when Boza Edwards, the one-time champion, is in the ring, there is non-stop action. Boza's legs are going, but Chacon's face is gone. It's all to the workout and uh, back to the drawing board. And back to a fight next April in London That's with right. Melvin Paul. Uh, and we, for as long as it's been... Uh, looking back at the main event, it took more time for John Mugabe and Earl Hargrove to make it from their dressing rooms to the ring than the duration of that first and only round of the bout. Yeah, well, that's the kind of thing that makes boxing so much fun and so explosive. It, it reminds me of the old Sonny Liston days where you couldn't get seated before the fight was over. Mugabe brings that excitement, of course. Everybody would like to see a little bit more fighting, but when a guy's got that kind of punch and that kind of excitement, you just got to sit riveted to the set and watch. We are going to take another look at that one round, actually less than a round, because this ended the official time at 1.33 of round number one. And I had the idea that Mugabe did not have any respect at all for Hargrove. Yeah, well, that was certainly the case. He'd studied the tape. He saw that Hargrove arced his punches, looped his, his uh, punches, and he thought he could come into that uh, and land a straight right, which he did several times. But really, Earl Hargrove was very careless when facing a man with the punching power. Look at that hook that Mugabe's just landed. Mugabe's hooks, as we saw with Vampire Johnson a few months ago, are, are carry a lethal punch. This is knockdown number one coming up. There you see the power of a punch that lands flush on the jaw. That's the kind of punch that can give Tommy Hearns a great deal of concern before he gets in and might even wor worry the marvelous one, Marvin Hagler. The only thing I charge you to look at is look at the recklessness of Mugabe when he's throwing the punches. He's wide open. Could he get away with that with marvelous Marvin Hagler who keeps calm and steps inside? This is almost an alley fight here. I would think he'll have more respect should he fight a Hagler or hers. I don't see him taking this kind of approach. I just led to the conclusion. And he was really out. He was still in a daze. A full minute later, when I went over and talked to him, he did not know uh, who I was. Of course, he didn't know who I was before the fight, so that was not really a symptom of his distress. And the official time, 1.33 of round number one, as Mugabe made it 25-0, and 0, all 25 by knockout. And now the Beast has to await the winner of Hearns and Hagler. Now, if Hagler... Beats Hearns, it would mean Mugabe goes up against Hearns for the junior middleweight title. 
if uh, Hearns wins, he vacates the junior middleweight uh, title, and then there would be a, a bout against Julian Jackson. That's already been mandated by the WBC, so that's in the works just as it stands, except for one thing. Whoever steps out of Hearns and Hagler has got a little time to recover, because that's going to be a tough fight. They're not going to fight for months. What does that mean for the beast Mugabe? He cannot stay idle. He's one of these kind of fighters, blows up to 200 pounds if you leave him alone. So Mickey Duff must keep him fighting, and must keep him fighting against dangerous opponents. All right, so Mugabe, 25 and 0, all 25 by KO. Again, the official time, 1.33 of round one here in Tampa. We are set for another edition of NBC's Inside Ringside. And today, the subject, one that Ferdy and I have discussed on many an occasion. Villanova outscored him 25 to 3 at the foul line, so Villanova knocks off number two in America. They're on to the final 16. Stay tuned for golf, everybody. to NBC by United Airlines. United's Royal Pacific service to the Far East. It's truly world class. This has been NBC's Sports World. This bud's for you. Hi, this is Jerry Lewis for the Muscular Dystrophy Association. And these are some of my kids visiting the world-famous Budweiser Clydesdales. John Mugabe has made all the right moves in his five years as a pro. In fact, he's been perfect. The middleweight title contender has knocked out 25 of 25 opponents and has signed for a shot at marvelous Marvin Hagler's crown. On the way, the Beast is tuning up with a fight against Bill Bradley. And as far as Mugabe is concerned, it's not if Bradley will fall, but when and how. It might be from a powerful right or a thunderous left. You'll see John the Beast Mugabe go for his 26th consecutive knockout on top-ranked boxing tonight.
live at Trump Casino Hotel in Atlantic City for Top Rank Boxing tonight featuring the man who will fight for the middleweight championship in November, John the Beast Mugabe. Hello everyone, I'm Sam Rosen. It's a pleasure to be back with you once again on Top Rank Boxing and a pleasure to be in the presence of royalty, working once again with the one and only Prince of Pugilism, Al Bernstein. And Al, John the Beast Mugabe is here taking on a virtual unknown in Bill Bradley, a tune-up fight for him. Yeah, this is the quintessential tune-up fight, I think, against Bill Bradley. And for John Mugabe, what is at stake here is not the title shot, but more the marketability of that title shot. A slip by him would cost him some dollars and perhaps cost the whole fight some credibility. John Mugabe has been perfect. 25 fights, 25 knockouts. When he gets in the ring, he truly is the beast. He really is. He has tremendous power, especially early in the fight. John Mugabe has a good straight right hand, good left hook. And if there are any questions about him, as you see that quote, yes, indeed, his punch, uh, when it's on target, will send you down. He's a fighter who, oh, the only question about him may be his stamina and perhaps his chin. James Hard Rock Green uh, raised some questions about that when they fought. In the later rounds, he had Mugabe a little hurt, and Mugabe looked tired, even though he took Green out. So we'll see. Bradley wants to take it into the later rounds. Bill Bradley comes in with a record of 22 and 7. Early in his career, he was very strong. He built up a record of 20 and 1, had won 15 in a row. Last couple of years, not so good. Well, there's no question he comes in here an immense underdog. I think uh, it will take something extraordinary for him to win this fight. What it will take is for him to fight a typical Bill Bradley fight, which is a swarming kind of fight, getting on the inside, smothering his opponent, uh, and smothering those punches and then hopefully taking it into the later rounds where maybe Mugabe will be tired and he can do some good. But Bill Bradley will have to fight for him the perfect fight to win tonight. He'll also have to duck a lot. Yeah, he will have to duck a lot. And for him, really, it's more a question of smothering than ducking. There's Bill Bradley, and uh, his chances are very slim in this fight, quite honestly. Well, they really are. But I, I think for him, as we said, he's got, there are certain things going for him. One may be the fact that even Mugabe's people acknowledge the fact that he is only at about 80% for this fight. He just wasn't motivated, I guess, to train as hard as he might. And, of course, he's looking ahead to Marvin Hagler, so it's natural there might be a little bit of a letdown. But Bradley says he will not run. Well, I don't, and I don't think he will, but there may be a grassroots movement on the part of Mugabe <laughs> to get him to run. We'll see. Okay. That's the big one for the night. It's a good night of top-ranked boxing coming your way, so stay with us. John Mugabe is the main event, but there's a lot more ahead. Top Rank Boxing is being brought to you by Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. By Old Spice Stick, the deodorant that works overtime. And by Exxon, quality you can count on. We are set for boxing action here in Atlantic City. We will open up with featherweights, so stay with us. Let's go back to Sam Rosen at ringside. Thanks, Al. And coming up, our main event, John the Beast Mugabe goes against Bill Bradley. Don't go away. It's next. Do you use condoms? The atmosphere at the... With John the Beast Mugabe. Sam Rosen and Al Bernstein ringside at Trump Casino Hotel in Atlantic City, New Jersey, moments away from our main event, which features the man who will fight for the middleweight championship in November, John the Beast Mugabe. Al has a close-up look at the Beast. John the Beast Mugabe's name conjures up one image, raw power. Vampire Johnson found out about that power last year when he tried slugging with Mugabe. The result was this devastating left hook and a second round knockout. Even if Mugabe telegraphed this hook, Johnson couldn't escape. He became one of John's 25 knockout victims. The 25-year-old Ugandan has marched through a number of top middleweights, including Frank Fletcher. The animal was no match for the beast. Fletcher spent most of the fight on the ropes taking a beating. Any stationary target is in trouble against Mugabe, especially in the early rounds. Mugabe was relentless, and he finished Frank off in the fourth for yet another knockout win.
Mugabe's early explosiveness was never more in evidence than against Earl Hargrove. Earl is also a big puncher, but he made the mistake of grumbling with Mugabe early in this fight. He paid for it in the very first round. Although there are still some questions about Mugabe's stamina and shin, there are none about his power. He can take most anyone out over the first five rounds. And that's what Bill Fireball Bradley will have to contend with. Is he ready? He says yes. Bill Bradley, everybody says it's not a matter of uh, will you fall, it's when will you fall. What do you say to that? I said everybody's underestimating me and they ought to look at it, you know, two ways. You know, when will he fall? You know, that's what I say. He'll be going out. How do you expect to accomplish what no one else has been able to accomplish? Like right now, I'm in very good shape, and uh, I've been helped a lot by Champ Cheney and my fiance Angela Matthews. They've been behind me 100%, so I'm ready today. I'm in very good shape, and I think that'll pull it off. He better be ready because there's the beast, and the beast is ready. He has been perfect in his career, 25 fights, 25 knockouts. John Mugabe, 25 years old, from Kampala, Uganda, whose last fight was March 17th when he knocked out Earl Hargrove in the first round. And there have been a lot of first round knockouts for John Mugabe. We are set for the introductions to our main event. Let's go to Michael Buffer. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Let's get ready to rumble! This is the main event of the evening. Scheduled for 10 rounds, this is in the middleweight division. The referee for this bout is Larry Hazard. Introducing first in the red corner, wearing the black trunks with red trim. He weighs 158 and one quarter pounds from Middletown, Ohio. His professional record, an excellent one, 22 victories, only seven losses, 12 KOs to his credit. Let's have a big hand for Billy Fireball Bradley. And his opponent in the blue corner, wearing the white trunks with black trim, weighing 161 pounds even from Kampala, Uganda. His professional record, unblemished 25 victories 25 ko's ladies and gentlemen the number one ranked junior middleweight in the world john the beast mugabe and there is john mugabe who has 10 first round knockouts six second round knockouts larry has his instruction holding a wrestling when I give you a command, I expect you to obey it. If you knock your opponent down, go to the farthest neutral corner. Remain in that corner until I tell you to continue boxing. If you go down, you must take a mandatory eight count. Three knockdown ruling has been waived, and the bell cannot save you if you go down toward the end of a round, except in the final round. You have any questions? I shake hands. Come out fighting at the bell. Good luck to you both. Scheduled for 10, Bradley's last fight knocked out in the fourth round, December 11th of 1984 by Matthew Hilton in Montreal. Mugabe, as I mentioned, stopped Earl Hargrove in the first, one of 10 first round knockouts by Mugabe. Joining us at ringside, the manager and co-trainer of marvelous Marvin Hagler, the middleweight champion, Goody Petronelli. And we, we welcome him here as he takes a look at John Mugabe, who will be marvelous Marvin Hagler's next opponent. You see Bradley getting inside as much as he can early. He wants to be inside the punching power of Mugabe. He thinks if he can smother Mugabe, he can take this fight for the later rounds and hopefully then at that point take advantage of what some people think is a chink in his armor, Mugabe. That is, it tends to get a little tired perhaps. Big wide left hook thrown by Mugabe. You can see the tremendous confidence he has just in his position and his stance. Goody, what are your impressions of John Mugabe? Well, uh, not that really impressed with him. I think the kid is fighting a little wrong, though he's pressing him and he should be doing more boxing. Either stay on the outside or right in tight. And he's, he's coming out too strong, and uh, that's uh, not too good. He can't last long that way. And he got hit with a good right hand by Mugabe. You know, you're right, Goody. He's in, the, he's in that no man's land. Yeah. He's not far 
enough yeah. weight, he's not close enough. Left right. uppercut hurt. Bradley rocked him back. Bradley collecting himself. Well, no one questions Mugabe's power, that's for sure. And when he can get a clean shot against you, especially if you're a stationary target, he'll send you down. Midway point of round one. Many thought that Earl Hargrove, who is a puncher, would test Mugabe's chin. But Mugabe wisely didn't give him a chance. He went right after Hargrove and took advantage of Earl early. Mugabe with a right to the body caught Bradley coming in. Solid right hand. Good left hook rocks Bradley back again. And Bradley ties Mugabe up. Well, it looks like another typical Mugabe performance. Bill Bradley's certainly not a top ten fighter or even close to it, but Mugabe is teeing off on him. And Bradley able to cover up and take the brunt of that left hook on the gloves. And Bradley pawing with that left jab and goodie, and he's just inviting the right over it. Oh, definitely. He's, he's stepping right in. He's just asking about it. He's right in punching range. He's not, he's, uh, he's, he should either be in tight or should be away, and right now he's, uh, he's asking for it. He's not coming back with nothing. He's posing out there. Late in round one, Mugabe not extending himself, not looking to it, and they go down. Got wrapped up, Bradley holding on. It's a slip. As we come to the end of round one, and that in itself is an accomplishment for <laughs> Bill Bradley. He survived the first round. They've got a takedown as well. 40% of the fighters that have fought John Mugabe have not survived the first round. So that's an accomplishment. Into John Mugabe's corner, Mickey Duff, his manager, leaning in. George Francis, his trainer. A drink, John? A drink? It's a drink, Jim. So you stick, jab, and then you put the punches together. Do you understand? Okay. Well, what you got to do when he rounds in, in, John, when he rounds in, watch you don't, watch you don't, watch him. Well, Goody, obviously you're, you're compiling a uh, scouting report in your mind uh, on John Mugabe. Well, let's take a look uh, at Mugabe's power here with the left. You see that uppercut. What would you say, how would you go about fighting uh, John Mugabe? Well, uh, it's no secret how to fight him. I mean, the thing is, you wouldn't fight him this way here. I mean, the kid is uh, the, the kid is game. He's asking for it. He's putting the pressure on him. That's and that's that's what Mugabe's looking for. And you got to give Mugabe some uh, some speech and combinations, something to look for. And uh, he's Mugabe's got a lot of confidence. This kid because uh, the kid is asking for it. See him? He's uh, he's right in punching range. Right in punching range. See that? That's Not quite the challenge Marvin will present to him. Oh, anyway, <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. The kid's game, though, but. Can Just a matter of time, you think? Yep. Yep. You know, among the people who okay. Bobby has fought, there really aren't that many classic boxers in that group. There are a lot of people who do come to him and come right into his, the, his cannon. So the point you make uh, is really accurate, Goody, that he thrives on people that are short and are aggressive and come after him. Yeah, that's for sure. He just has to wait and count up. Just wait until the man comes at him. He doesn't have to move at all. But the kid's a game kid. There's that left hook that stunned Bradley. There has not been enough head movement from Bill Bradley. That's what Champ Cheney said they wanted to do. Slip and slide, hit Mugabe from angles, and that really hasn't happened yet. Mugabe's hands are very low, though, Goody. I mean, they are uh, very low, and he is getting yeah. hit with some things from Bradley. I know it. Believe it or not, yeah. I think that's just a sign of uh, perhaps contempt for Bill Bradley, that he doesn't consider him a, a real top-notch opponent at all. Uh, probably. I think so. He, he's, uh, he's just setting his own pace. He's setting back, waiting the kid to come in. Bradley has done one thing. He's kept that right hand up to block a lot of those left hooks. All right, Bradley, step back. Let him out. Let him out. Going go in round two. 
you know, even when Mugabe doesn't land a punch square, he's knocking Bradley off balance. Shows you the power he has. There's a left hook. Landing by Mugabe as Bradley tries to tie it up. You know, on the inside, some people feel Mugabe is vulnerable. Would you like to see Marvin on the inside against him? Marvin do well on the yeah. uh, inside. Marvin is very versatile, as you know. He's uh, outside on inside. Well, he certainly oh, fought well against the taller Hearns on the inside. And in other fights, he's done that, though, not always given credit for it. Right. Bradley has taken some shots to the body that have taken a lot out of him. He looks like he could be ready to go at any moment right now. Ten seconds to go in round two. Bradley holding on and surviving as we come to the end of the second round. Well, John Mugabe's also a body puncher. Look, he throws his left hook, and that under the heart, and that knocks Bill Bradley backwards. A lot of power there. Round three. It's scheduled for ten. Perhaps the beast is getting a little work in and maybe carrying Bill Bradley a little bit. Well, I've got him winning the first two rounds, Mugabe, that's for sure. They, they steadfastly said today, Mickey Duff and George Francis and Mugabe, they were not going to carry Bill Bradley. So we don't want to worry about butts or anything. We want to go in. We want to knock him out and get out of this and then prepare for Marvin Hagler. Well, as you said, Al, Bradley is doing a lot of holding. He took a left hook to the body one more time. Do you have to be concerned about that left hook, Goody? Not really. Why not? It looks like that's his favorite punch here. Yeah, but uh, he's got, uh, like you say, he's got a kid out there that he can land it on. Uh, we're not taking him lightly, uh, that's for sure, but uh, Marvin's got too many guns for this guy. Goody Petronelli is with us at ringside, the manager and co-trainer of marvelous Marvin Hagler, the middleweight champion of the world, who will defend against John Mugabe in November. If there's a rap against Mugabe, it is that he's a one-dimensional fighter. Look at him look at the ground. Now he's gonna I think he's trying to decoy Bill Bradley by looking at his feet and then probably throwing either the left hook or the overhand right. A little showboat stuff. A little Mugabe shuffle. And that's uncharacteristic of Mugabe to a great extent. That means I mean he's got Bill Bradley in just right where he wants him. Well, a big crowd has turned out to see Mugabe. He lands a left right to the body, right to the heart of Bradley. Bradley is trying to tie up Mugabe. Matter of time now. Bradley is stunned, shaken up, wobbly on his feet. Mugabe going for it. And Bradley, look at what Bradley just did. He picked him up just to stop it. Well, that's one way to stop Mugabe from hitting you. Bill Bradley's strong, I guess. Bradley, Bradley just cannot hurt him. He hits him with two left hooks, but they're slapping punches. Half a minute to go in the third round. Mugabe landing the right hand uppercut. And I, I know Larry Hazard will be very, very careful to watch Bill Bradley so that if he is in trouble, he will step in quickly. Bradley fighting a survivor's fight in the final seconds of round three. Mugabe with tremendous power to the body. You know, Bradley's been able to land the left hook, but he just doesn't have anything on it. Can't hurt Mugabe with it. Lancing left hook, the end of round three. And Larry Hazard leads John Mugabe away. You can see the pained expression on the face of Bill Bradley. I think he wants to quit right now. I think he'd be very happy if the fight were stopped. Uh, uh, the game's getting that's for sure. How do you feel? How do you feel, brother? Doctor is checking him out. Let me see. Let me see. I'd like to have a... I'd like to have a... Somebody who's kidding. Here's where John Mugabe first got Bradley in some difficulty, that right hand. Now, Mugabe, who is a good finisher, we've certainly seen that, goes after him with some big left hooks. And now you'll see Bradley just pick Mugabe up. He is really stunned, but 
He grabs on to Mugabe, lifts him in the air and says, uh-uh, I've had enough of this. Stop, please. Round four, scheduled for 10, and it's gone a lot longer than most people expected. Bill Bradley, early in his career, built up a pretty good record. In his first three years, he was 20 and three. And actually, at one point, was 20 and one. Well, he has obviously become an opponent, and that is what he is in there for against John Mugabe. And, uh, it, to his credit, I guess, that he's going four rounds. And, of course, we should point out that fighters who are better than Bill Bradley, I mean, Earl Hargrove and uh, Vampire Johnson and Curtis Parker, uh, Gary Guyton, who is also a powerful fighter, they have not gone four with him. You know, the one thing all of fighters have in common is that they are punchers. They have suspect chins and they are punchers. And I wonder, again, what will Mugabe do when faced with a boxer like Marvin Hagler? That's the key question, really, Goody. Yeah, he'd be in trouble, that's for sure. <laughs> for sure, this is not a totally objective viewpoint. Yeah, yeah. Good left hook got in by Mugabe. That is his big punch. So he does pack a lot of power in the right hand as well. This is our main event, round four, scheduled for 10. All Mugabe. The only question that people uh, are asking is how does he fare or how does he measure up the marvelous Marvin Hagler? I want to see the power of the man who has been nicknamed the Beast. 25 knockouts and 25 fights. You know, giving Bill Bradley, Bradley some credit here, he has taken the same kinds of punches that have been knocking out these other people. Now, we do get into an area where the conditioning of, of Mugabe, which really may not be that good for this fight, may start to have some impact on whether he can knock Bradley out. I don't know. Bradley's taking some big shots, and then he ties Mugabe up. Swelling under the left eye of Bill Bradley. Bradley's able to tie Mugabe up one more time. Half a minute to go in the fourth round. There have been no knockdowns. To most people here viewing the fight, that's got to be a surprise. Counting down to the end of round four of our main event. Welcome back to Trump Casino Hotel in Atlantic City. The fight has been stopped. The doctors checking in with Bill Bradley have determined he's taken enough punishment. And the fight has been stopped at the end of the fourth round. It's a TKO victory for John Mugabe, though uh, it did not uh, show us the big knockout booming punch that the most people were looking for. Bradley took a lot of good shots. Well, he did. And as I pointed out, uh, some better fighters than him had not taken those shots. And uh, he had taken a lot of punishment as we look at Bill Bradley. He never did really get into the flow of his fight plan, as Goody pointed out, to get inside Bob Weave's stick, get hit him from different angles. He was right in the punching room of John Mugabe. And as we look at Mickey Duff talking to Mugabe, the main point for him is that he won tonight. And even if he wasn't as devastating as some would like him to be, he won. He now gets to prepare for Hagler. And I don't know that we can really deduce too much from this fight, to be no, perfectly not, honest. not really. Uh, Goody Petronelli sitting in with us at ringside has gone back to the locker room to work with uh, some other fighters. We thank him for sitting in with us. His parting comment was that uh, Marvelous Marvin will feast on the beast. Well, of course, that's his viewpoint, and it's uh, not an objective one, but it's, it's one that's shared by many people. And he's going to have to deal, John Mugabe, with the question of fighting a skilled boxer. Frankly, you look down the list of opponents, he's fought some very good punchers and some tough guys. No genuinely skilled boxers. That's the question. Okay, let's get the official announcement and time from Michael Buffer in the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Larry Hazard stops this bout at the end of the fourth round. 26 in a row, 26 straight knockouts. The winner, John the Beast Mugabe.
kind of a mixed reaction. I think the fans here at Trump Casino Hotel wanted to see Mugabe land with the big knockout. It didn't happen. The fight is stopped. Al will be talking with John Mugabe and company in a moment. The Champions, presented by Old Spice, after shave and cologne. Floyd Patterson is so explosive, you know. He's oh, he really explode in the, in his uh, when he was uh, throwing away his punches. But this way, I stuck him all the time. He uh, never got to start. He had to start again all the time. The, I don't think Patterson was close to me with one punch, single punch. Three rounds, not a punch. I won the fight too easy, you know. Oh, you got it. Week on Top Rank Boxing, right back here in Atlantic City, will be at Resorts International in the ESPN Junior Welterweight Tournament Finals. The Eastern Division will be held. Bruce Williams and Ramon Santana. Bruce Williams 18-1-1. Ramon Santana 14-3, 11 knockouts. Al and I will be ringside to bring it to you Thursday night, August 15th, live from Resorts International in Atlantic City. Right now, live from Trump Casino Hotel, Al with... John the Beast Mugabe. Al? John, uh, first, were you happy with what you did tonight? Uh, I wasn't happy because hey, guys. I, I, I didn't, you know, I wasn't in you know, a good shape. Uh, uh, for, for, uh, probably on this fight, uh, anyway, I mean, I didn't train, I mean, so hard. Mm -hmm. But my mind, it was, you know, for the big fight, for me. Okay. All right, yeah. you were looking ahead a little bit to Marvin Hagler. Uh, Mickey, I know you were a little concerned about the fact you're coming into this fight with not the best condition, but Bill Bradley was not a puncher. He was not that tough an opponent. What about the preparation now for Hagler? What does John have to do to get ready for Hagler other than obviously getting into shape? I'll tell you now, and he knows it, I'm going to arrest him for three months. I'm not <laughs> going to leave his side. We're going back to Tampa. He's going to start training. We're then doing some press conferences. And from there onwards, we are going to train at the Eden Rock Hotel in Miami for eight weeks. And he will not miss a day's work. He will be in the best shape of his life. He was like in 60% condition. That's why we took a warm-up fight, because I knew he had to have something to work for to get him ready for mm -hmm. the next fight. The next fight, he will be in the condition of his life. And he will knock out Marvin, marvelous Marvin Hagler. Make no mistake about it. Uh, now, why do you say that? What is it about his style and his skills that make you feel that, that he can knock out Hagler? Because he has the combination punches. And let me tell you this. I don't delude myself. Marvelous Marvin Hagler is, without a doubt, the best opponent that John Mugabe will afford. Equally, John the Beast Mugabe is the best opponent Marvin Hagler will have ever fought. Make no mistake. Better than Tommy Hearns. Yes, better than Tommy. He would have knocked Hearns out quicker than, than Hagler did. He had exactly the same style. What Hagler did in that fight, he does naturally every fight. Maybe not so much tonight because he wasn't in the mm -hmm. shape. But normally, that's what he does. He gets right on top of your backside and he sits on you. And that's what Hagler did and that was the way to lick Hearns. And I think they knew it. That's why they paid him off to fight Hagler first. Some would say that the one question would be that as you look down the list of opponents that John has fought, he's fought some very good punchers, some very tough fighters. Maybe not the boxers that Hagler is. Uh, does that concern you at all? No, it doesn't concern me because a little out of shape tonight. You saw when he chose to box. He's a good boxer. He has a good jab. He has a good sense of anticipation. He won't lose nothing with Hagler when they're boxing. But Hagler says he's going to feast on the beast. I keep saying... Let him come out and fight John Mugabe the way he fought Thomas Hearns. And the first one that takes a pace back is a sissy. But most people think he won't fight that way. What if he doesn't? What if he boxes John Mugabe? What, what then? As Joe Lewis, as the late Joe Lewis, beloved Joe Lewis used to say, he can run but he can't hide. All right, the last question. His stamina has been questioned because of the Hard Rock Green fight. How do we know he can go 10, 12 rounds? I don't know how his stamina could be questioned in the Hard Rock Green fight. He took a hell of a licking when he got a thumb in the eye in the second round, stayed in there in the third round, weathered all kinds of storms and had enough energy left to knock out Green in the last round. If he was lacking in stamina that night, then it's impossible to be. It's a head stamina. Okay, an impressive barrister for his case, Mickey Duff. 
And John Mugabe, well, he knocked out Fireball Bradley, and he's headed for Marvin Hagler. Let's go back to Sam. Thank you, Al. Thanks to Mickey Duff. And thanks to John the Beast Mugabe. The next time you will see him in the ring will be in November when he goes after the middleweight championship of the world currently held by marvelous Marvin Hagler. A TKO victory for John the Beast Mugabe tonight. We'll be back in just a moment. On this assembly line... We've got some great tennis action coming your way. The Men's Canadian Open, it'll be live Saturday, August 17th, Sunday, August the 18th from Jerry Tennis Stadium in Montreal. John McEnroe will defend his championship, so make sure to tune in for the semifinals on Saturday, the finals on Sunday, August 17th and 18th, right here, Men's Canadian Open on ESPN. Right here, we're set for more boxing action, so is Michael Buffer. Let's go to him. Wins the unanimous decision victory here in Atlantic City. We'll be back with a final word in just a moment. Introducing. Welcome back to Trump Casino Hotel in Atlantic City. The big story of the night is John Mugabe. That's the man everyone came to see, paid a lot of money to see. Uh, big crowd. And, of course, it's John Mugabe uh, who uh, will be fighting marvelous Marvin Hagler uh, for the middleweight championship in November. And what did you think, Al? Well, I think that for John Mugabe, uh, we can't really establish too much from this performance because... It was against Bill Bradley, who was not a, uh, that enormous an opponent. Mugabe wasn't in tremendous shape for this fight. However, I think what you have to look at are the things that people already know about that fight, and that is that Marvin Hagler is probably a better all-around boxer than Mugabe's ever faced. But if you believe Mickey Duff, Mugabe is the most powerful fighter that Hagler has ever faced, with apologies perhaps to Tommy <laughs> Hearns. So what it's going to boil down to, I think, is the thinking the strategy of Marvin Hagler and his power, because he can hit against the power of Hagler. Okay, it's great to be back right. with you. The Bagel Boys will be back next <laughs> week at Resorts International. We'll have the ESPN Junior Welterweight Tournament for you, the Eastern Finals, so be with us for that. Top Rank Boxing has been brought to you by Rolaids for acid indigestion or heartburn. Rolaids spells 100% relief. For Al Bernstein, this is Sam Rosen. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next week on Top Rank Boxing. So long, everyone. Coming up on Sports Center, we'll have player and fan reaction. In Atlantic City uh, for Top Rank Boxing, en route to his meeting with Marvin Hagler, and 100 people sometimes come together in the spring. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the ESPN Sports Center, along with Gail Gardner. Hello. Watch the big right hand. Flicking out the left jab, down to the body, and Edwin Rosario lands the big right to the chin of Anthony Jones. Jones would get back up and try to continue, but it only lasted about another 10 seconds. Well, as promised, we're going to bring you another fight. Last night on the outskirts of Paris, a WBC super welterweight title fight took place. Champion Rene Jacot defended his title for the very first time against the challenger, John the Beast Mugabe. You'll recall that Jaco won the title with a huge upset of then-champion Donald Curry. That was in February of this year. For John Mugabe, it was his third try at a world title. He fell short his two previous tries with losses to both Marvin Hagler and Dwayne Thomas. What happened last night, believe me, was very much out of the ordinary. Here's how Alex and I called it live via satellite. And there's the bell, and round one is underway from outside of Paris, France, and it's John Mugabe wearing the white trunks Rene Jaco in the gold. If the pattern of this fight, Dan, follows the pattern of the Curry fight, when Jaco won the title, he will be a safety first fighter in the opening rounds, especially against somebody with the power of John Mugabe. When you talk about the power of John Mugabe, it is clearly power that Jaco 
has never seen before. Oh, and obviously see the respect he has right now. Rene Jacob being quite cautious. You see just the short arm flick and then falling backwards. And the interesting thing is John Mugabe has not jumped on him. He's taking his time too. Mugabe flicking the left jab, but make no mistake about it. It's the right cross, the punch that does the majority of the damage to the opponents of John the Beast Mugabe. And a, an awkward jab at that. That's right, yeah. He's not, uh, <laughs> it's not a punch John has had a lot of occasion to use. <laughs> not a stylish uh, fighter. In fact, he once referred to the, to the jab as a punch that only weak fighters throw. He, uh, uh, he views it with a great deal of disdain. Here's the first hard punch of the fight by Mugabe. A right to the body by the Beast. And again, Alex, you, you touched on it. Uh, Jaco extremely cautious, not willing to uh, wade in and attempt to land a meaningful blow. Fought the same way against Curry when he won the title. It's a formula that made him a world champion, and I don't think he can change it. On the scorecards, Curry was ahead after the first three or four rounds, and it was... Then the Chico felt that his superior conditioning really came into play. Curry tired and Chico came on strong. Coming off the ropes, Chico initiating the, the clinch. Yeah, he's making sure that he doesn't leave himself open there when he's within range of Mugabe. He wants to be either real close to Mugabe or real far away from him. He doesn't want to stay in Mugabe's punching range, that medium range, where Mugabe's punches will have the most power. One of the things we want to watch for today is does John Mugabe have the willingness to work to the body? He's known traditionally as a headhunter, and there is the big right by Mugabe the first time he goes to the head, the referee. Oh, and he hurt his leg, Dan. He is limping. Jaco is up and favoring his left leg. And he won't be able to continue. He's looking to his corner it's in agony. It's impossible to speculate whether it's a knee or an ankle, but Rene Jaco he has is... To, Arthur McKinney has to call the fight. And Jaco can hardly stay on his feet. Rene Jaco. It doesn't look to be a cramp, Dan, where he could walk it off. It looks to be something much more serious. Time out. Or can he just put his hand to the signal of time? Now, Arthur may be thinking this. He went down from a push. It was not a legal knockdown. It was not him. a legal blow. He definitely waved off a knockdown. Yeah, he waved off the knockdown. So he may be saying because he went down from something that was not a legal blow that he's allowing Jaco time to recover. And Arthur's saying, shush. To the people who are trying to give him a lot of advice. There's a punch. It hit Jaco's arm, it looked like, and knocked him down. The force of the punch hit his arm and spun him down that way. Here we get a look at the punch, and actually, it's the right arm of Mugabe came over and intertwined and hooked the arm of Jaco and almost threw him to the ground. But even from that angle, we couldn't speculate as to what part of Jaco's leg actually was twisted, and this fight is going to continue. Arthur McCanny lets the fighters resume in the center of the ring. And it can't continue for long. A man no. can't stand up. Jaco down on the mat, and there is no way that this fight can continue. And McCanny what? is giving him a count. It looks like he's giving him a count. He's in agony. He has to stop it. And there it is. Arthur McCanny stopping the fight. Rene Jaco you can see just a combination of, of disappointment and agony over the injury to the leg. And a stunned crowd in France watches this in total disbelief. Rene Jouko making his first title defense against John the Beast Mugabe. And Mugabe now gets his first world title on his well, third try. And, and Alex... Uh, I guess it's there's well, let's gonna be wait some and see kind what Arthur ruling. McCanny says here because if he says that he was thrown down illegally, let's see, Arthur McCanny is taking him over to neutral corner. It's possible there could be a disqualification. I, I think that would be terribly unfair. Yeah. Mugabe threw a legal punch. I think it's also a question whether that was a legal knockdown because he did hit something. It wasn't though he threw him down, he threw a punch. The arm did get entangled, and he went down from the force of a blow, even though the blow didn't make contact with the torso of the fighter. I have not yet seen a ruling, a definitive ruling, from Arthur McCanny. If there's one referee in the world 
who has the uh, poise to handle this kind of a situation. I think it is Arthur McCanny. Right now, the concern is in the Jaco corner to attempt to find out what exactly is wrong with his leg. And Arthur McCanny appears to be more involved with that. The fight is already over. He has stopped the fight. You can see him right there saying that's all. And he raises Mugabe's arm, and John Mugabe has won the world championship. On his third try, after losses to Hagler and Thomas, John the Beast Mugabe finally gets his world title. He's now the WBC super welterweight champion, and as you can see, Rene Jaco in agony in the corner. Oh, and your heart has to go out to this man. I mean, he prepared to fight, defend his world championship, terribly proud of being the first French world champion in three decades. And to have it end this way, it has to be crushing. There's a lot more work to painting than just the painting. So use a paint that'll keep you from having to do it all again for a long time. Pittsburgh Paints. Our paint is tested and researched, so we know it'll last and look beautiful for years. Pittsburgh Paints. You work too hard to paint with anything less. Right now, save 20% or more on Pittsburgh Paints and Stains at participating Pittsburgh Paints dealers. One of the activities around the house we enjoy is washing the family car. Ain't she a beauty? And when we're finished, we enjoy making A&W root beer floats. Flipping in the ice cream, then pouring in that rich, creamy A&W. Mmm, now you try it. Darn, only had 20 payments left. Make yourself an A&W root beer float. Welcome back to Atlantic City, and as I told you leading into that piece of video, it was rather a remarkable finish to that fight. And if we could, we're going to take a look again at the knockdown and the in injury suffered by Rene Jaco. Here's the overhead view of it. Watch the right arm of Mugabe come over the top. Really uh, more of a glancing blow, but it lands on the left shoulder of Jaco, forcing him down, and you can see the left leg pinned underneath Rene Jaco, and of course that was the end of the fight. As it turned out, that left ankle was fractured in that incident. So you really have to marvel at the uh, at the conditioning and of course the determination of Rene Jaco continuing even on a broken ankle. You see he has to be carried out of the arena and of course the crowd just not believing their fallen hero, but again suffering a fractured left ankle. Rene Jaco. So you really have to admire this young man and his courage. But, of course, there was some controversy around surrounding a fight like this. And, of course, at the center of that was the referee in that bout, Arthur McCanny. Earlier today, Alex Swallow spoke to Arthur McCanny. Arthur, first of all, what did you rule the first time Rene Jaco went down to the canvas? The first time he went down, I ruled it a no knockdown. It was a slip. Okay, and then when he got up, why did you, and was not able to continue at that point, you took about a minute, minute and a half to allow him to recover. What was your thinking on allowing him that time? Well, when he got up, he was complaining. He wasn't complaining, he doesn't speak English, but I could tell by the way he was walking that he was having trouble with his left ankle. And then I decided uh, to give him just a moment's rest, then I called a timeout and invited the doctor into the ring. And what did the doctor tell you at that point? The doctor looked at it uh, momentarily, and then he said, all right, let him continue, and the fighter said continue, and his corner said continue. All right, when they did continue, and Jaco went down from a legal punch after that, what did you rule at that point? Did you count him out? Uh, I, uh, after that, he was having difficulty, and he was attempting to hold. He looked kind of fearful of being hit with the right hand. He was trying to avoid the right hand. He was attempting to hold, and also, at the same time, uh, with a lot of grimace in his face, he was in, he was in pain, and he was hit at the top of the head by a legal punch, and he went down. I picked up the count on four and counted him out. Okay, at that point, Arthur, I'll Jaco... You at that point, what happened? Okay, go ahead. At that point, Mickey Duff called me over, and he said, oh, uh, you counted him out. Raise Mugabe's hand. I said, I will not raise his hand until it's announced officially by the announcer. I said, my first concern is to go over to the fighter to see how he's doing. 
I went over there and I asked the doctor to remove his shoe. The fight is over. The announcer did not make the announcement in all the confusion. So then I decided I went over to Mugabe and raised his hand. And that's when they could, all of the fans knew that Mugabe won by a KO. Arthur, there was a point when Jaco was on his stool that you went over and put John Mugabe in a neutral corner. That's correct. The reason... I that's correct. The reason for that is because you don't want any tampering with a fighter when he is in a, a restful period waiting for, for, some, uh, for some result of mine. So you put him in a neutral corner. That's a rule that I established myself. Get him away from his trainer and his manager so that, you know, if they had any hanky-panky ideas, which of course I know Mickey doesn't, but I put him in a neutral corner so that I knew that it was safe. Thanks very much, Arthur. Granted, Alex, a, a very difficult position for Arthur McKenty to be in. Uh, one of the questions uh, that I have in my mind is, is how did it even go on? How did the fight even continue after the first knockdown? Well, Arthur says the doctor said it was okay. The corner wanted to continue, the fighter wanted to continue, and he wanted to give him a chance, as we heard, to defend his championship. Uh, a tough spot for Arthur McKenty to be in. I mean, really. Well, it really was, but I think ultimately the result was correct. I think ultimately John Mugabe deserved to become champion. He knocked the man down, did not foul him. It was very unlucky on the face of it for Rene Jaco, but I think ultimately it may have been lucky because, in my opinion, this is only an opinion, I think Rene Jaco was going to get knocked out by John Mugabe. At least now, uh, Rene Jaco has some controversy surrounding his loss, and he will get when that fractured ankle heals, and we're told that could be nine months to year. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, his professional record... Black trim. He weighs 158 pounds from Kampala, Uganda, now living in Tampa, Florida, undefeated in 22 professional fights, 22 knockouts, ranked number two by the Bible of Boxing Ring Magazine, John the Beast Mugabe. John the Beast Mugabe in his previous 22 fights yet to involve the judges. But I will tell you that the scoring is on the 10-point loss system. Referee Joe Cortez does not get involved in the scoring. It'll be handled by the three judges. Three knockdown rule is in effect. Fighter going down, go to the bottom of the corner. You want low punches, skinny punches, and rather punches. And the reach Other advantage to Mugabe. Slight fight, height advantage to John Mugabe. Right, Frank the up. Animal, while in his prime, a search and destroy style fighter. Swarming, aggressive, when sharp, looking for the early KO, putting the head down, boring in from bell to bell. John Mugabe looking always for that early KO and he has stopped 14 of his opponents in the first or second round. He comes off the second round quickie over Vampire Johnson just a couple of months ago. Scheduled for 10 and at the 160 pound middleweight limit. Right off the bat, Animal is not swarming in there like he said he was going to do. He's showing a little respect for the punching power of Mugabe. And they are chanting Beast. Frank reaching with his punches. That's devastating with a puncher like Mugabe who can hook as you come in. Remember, Animal Fletcher's style is to swarm in. That means just to run in. Arms flailing, throwing punches, trying to smother Mugabe before he gets his off. He's not doing that. He's keeping that distance between them. That distance is punching distance. That distance is what Mugabe needs to get off clean shots. A minute in. Opening round. And John Mugabe opening as he did against Vampire Johnson by just checking things out. Mugabe's face, a mask, an expression.
expressionless mask. He has not shown any emotion whatsoever. He's just coolly going about his business. Frank, on the other hand, looks apprehensive. The animal Fletcher's not fighting with his wild abandoned embryo that he did before. He looks slightly intimidated. Magami continues to cut the right hand, flashing to the left. Fletcher does not want to get trapped. And those are very loose strokes. Those punches of the bout thrown by Magami. And the crowd responds. First round. Magabi, Magabi hoping to trap the animal Fletcher on the ropes. Animal is obliging. Why he wants to go along those ropes, I'll never know. That's the place that Magabi does his best work. That's what he's got to do. Back away as soon as his feels that his back touch those ropes. He's got to move away from there. Get in the middle of the ring and move around. Magabi seeming content oh, to feel him out. A hook thrown by the southpaw, Fletcher getting in. And the hooks by Mugabe just missing. Final seconds. First oh. round is Mugabe. He did land the right hand. We'll be right back. After 18 holes on a hot afternoon. Mugabe out for round two, 22 and 0. All 22 by knockout. His last defeat taking place as an amateur. Fighting for the gold of the 1980 Moscow Olympics. And now Mugabe going to work with authority on Frank Fletcher. Frank again, back to the ropes, getting hit. And there is Lucille Fletcher, the mother of Frank the Animal. Fletcher's corner exhorting him, move around, stick the jab out, don't get hung on the ropes. All good advice, but John Abiz Mugabe relentlessly follows you under the ropes once he gets the advantage. Opening minute, second round, right hand grazing Fletcher. in trouble, trying to get off the ropes. But Gubby with the combination, and Fletcher, let's say this Cortez, he's trying to help Fletcher through the ropes to get back into the action, halfway through, second round. Fletcher was actually fortunate that he ended up between the ropes. Fletcher not learning his lesson with those ropes. As soon as that back touches the ropes, on comes John. a good left hook that landed right on Mugabe that stopped him for a second. He's got to get off these ropes. Less than a minute left. Round two. Mugabe getting down a serious work. Hold him with that right hand. Good left by Fletcher. Fletcher keeps catching Mugabe with a left hook, but it doesn't have much power in it now. Time remaining. Second round. Fletcher got in on Mugabe. Again, the left hook by Animal Fletcher. Nothing on it, though. Not enough to stop Mugabe from coming on. And he caught Mugabe again. Mugabe wide open, although hurting Fletcher, but he continues to leave himself vulnerable. Final seconds. Second round. Second round, John Mugabe able to land 
particularly with the right hand, but also constantly open. And we saw James Hallbrock Green get to Mugabe, providing Mugabe with his toughest test. And Fletcher also was able to get it with that left hand. He's got to improve his defense if he's going to fight for the title because he's getting hit each one of these fights with hooks that are thrown by both Hard Rock Green and, in this case, Animal Fletcher. Animal just doesn't have that much on the punches because he's sustaining hard, hard punishment from Mugabe. Combination by Mugabe. Fletcher was able to get a couple of left hands in. And we're on to round three. Marv Albert, Bernie Pacheco from Tampa, Florida. Once again, Fletcher with the left hand. And the roundhouse right by Mugabe. Mugabe with the left. Fletcher now knows he can land that hook when he wants. It's just that he's got to pay a fearful toll when he throws it. He's just hoping one of those will be the ticket to slow up John Mugabe. He's certainly landing him right where he's aiming him, right on the chin of John Mugabe. And Fletcher's corner screaming, get off first. It has been Mugabe getting off first to this point. Both men losing a lot of fluid. Sweat and water pouring off both men. The ring lights are close and they're very hot. Mugabe again trapping Fletcher in the corner. Fletcher was able to answer. The feint by Mugabe but not able to connect. Halfway through. Fletcher continuously off balance and then caught. What an instrument of destruction this John Mugabe is. He gets in that corner and it's bad news. Although Frank the Animal is not having any of it. He knows he can hit him with that hook and he's been winging it. Three times in a row, four times in a row. Less than a minute left. Round it's over three. as if he has no other punch in his arm except that left. And again, Fletcher trapped in the corner. My music keeps me going in more ways than one. I have Frank Fletcher on the verge of closing, but much confidence in the corner of Fletcher, who has been able to land with that left hook on Mugabe. This corner thinks he's on the verge of a knockout. He may well be. Depends on which side you're sitting on. He's, Frank has opened the round with an amazing display of freshness here. He was so, so weary at the end of the third round. Again, Fletcher able to land on Mugabe. Mugabe back with that hard right hand. Not much body shots here. Everything going to the head. Mugabe fighting coolly. He seems to go hard as soon as he sees Fletcher go to the ropes. Closing fast on Frank the Animal Fletcher. Looks like it may pop open. A lot of fluid there. Fletcher 
showing some movement, trying to move around, and he would survive much longer if he did that and stay away from those ropes. There he is again in the corner. Combination by Mugabe. His timing has been a bit off uh, to this point, using the jab and coming on with the right, as you just saw. Halfway through, this is round four, slated for ten. Mugabe picking his shots now, almost as if he's not in a hurry. Could be a mistake. decision to Wilfred Cipion and right here he's stopped by John Mugabe. We'll be back here in Tampa in a moment. The great cars of Europe priced far out of reach until now. Renault presents the road as he has stopped Frank the Animal Fletcher. Ladies and gentlemen, the time two minutes, three seconds of the fourth round. The winner and still undefeated by Texas knockout John the Beast Mugabe Mugabe the official time two minutes three seconds round four for a moment the referee Joe Cortez appeared as if he would give it the mandatory eight and that changed his mind as Fletcher was walloped through the ropes that's the big punch the right hand Fletcher about to go down, another right, the left, to the ropes, and uh, here is where Cortez is checking it over as Mugabe continues to pummel Fletcher between the ropes. The doctor, you might, there he is, darting uh, from the middle of your screen. The fight had not been called at this point. Cortez was uncertain at first he was going to give that mandatory, and then, as he's counting it out, he changed his mind all over. Two minutes, three seconds, round four. John Mugabe making it a record of 23-0, and all 23 by KO. Let's go to the ring. Here's Ferdy. John, congratulations. First, did, you, did that left? No, no doubt about it. This kid has tons of talent. He absolutely does, and I think then... He also wants to reestablish his credibility. He wants to prove that his loss to Jackson was a fluke, that he has the skill as well as the chin to be a world champion. If, if you wanted to test your chin, I don't think uh, you could have picked a better opponent than Terry's pick today and John Mugabe. As you can see, both fighters are in the ring. Let's take a look at the numbers. Mugabe, eight years the senior of Terry Norris, and that's a hard 154 for John Mugabe. He does not make that weight easily. All right, the rules, WBC rules will apply. The 10-point must scoring. No three knockdown, no standing eight. Only the referee can stop the fight, and a fighter cannot be saved by the bell until, unless it is the final round. There's the bell for the beginning of round one. This WBC Super Welterweight Championship bout between Terry Norris and the champion, John the Beast Mugabe. Eddie Eckert is our referee here this afternoon, and terrible Terry Norris. Norris in the all-white trunks on the left of your screen here. John Mugabe on the right with the black stripe. Both fighters fighting out of the conventional stance. 
And Terry Norris wisely not wading right in, testing John Mugabe early. It be behooves Norris to dance and box and use his skills as much as he can. A good lift from Norris, and Mugabe is staggered. John Mugabe goes down. A lift from Terry Norris drops John Mugabe. Mugabe is up and on Queer Street. Oh, this crowd is stunned. John Mugabe dropped his mouthpiece. Here's where Mugabe will need all the experience he has. Can he hang on? Terry Norris closing in on Mugabe, and Mugabe wisely holding on, Alex. Only put down once before in his career against Marvelous Marvin Hagler, but he's in much worse trouble here. It was a left from Norris that caught Mugabe flush. And Mugabe does at least appear to be getting his legs back to a degree. If somebody told you there was going to be a knockdown in round one, Dan. Oh, and that right from Norris. You saw it sniffing the legs of Mugabe. And John Mugabe is helpless. Holding on. Coming up by one minute left in the round. There is no three knockdown rule, and there is no standing eight count. It looked like the referee could have given a standing eight count there, but there is not in the WBC. It is John Mugabe that has a track record of coming out of the blocks in a hurry. But this round is all Terry Norris. And now for Mugabe, it's just a question, can he survive? And we should say that Terry Norris should be careful because he can still win punches. And two good left hooks from Mugabe, but Norris comes right back. This is clearly a pro-Mugabe crowd. John lived here in Tampa for a number of years. Oh, and I think Terry Norris and John Mugabe will not get up. Terry Norris with the right finishes it here in round one. WBC Super Welterweight Champion. When he first fought for the title, he was the victim of a second round knockdown. And today, he made the most feared puncher, perhaps in boxing, the victim. John Mugabe still on the canvas. The official time, two minutes and 47 seconds of the first round. And John Mugabe up against the ropes. The Dan, first punch, Alex, that left, and then it was the last one was a right. I started to say during the round, if somebody had told you there was going to be a first round knockout in this fight, who would have ever believed that the victim was going to be John Mugabe? Well, we are the beneficiaries in respect of this early knockout. That's because we're going to bring you next the IBF WBC Junior Welterweight Championship. That from Las Vegas, that's Julio Cesar Chavez and Meldrick Taylor. So we'll be back here to Tampa in a moment. Out. Terry, your first try for a title was a disaster. You're well ahead. You got caught with a punch in the second round. This time it was you that put the power on the opponent. Well, I made sure this time that uh, I was going to be on the other end of this. You know, I, I took uh, Jackson for granted after the first round. I thought I beat him, beat him half to death the first round. You're talking about your fight against Julian Jackson. Julian Jackson, you know, I knew. But then I got careless. I got careless. And then he caught me with a good shot. Let's take a look at the action in round one. I think it started off, Terry, with a left hook. This is early in round one. First minute of the round. There, that left hook on his temple, and his legs were gone at that point. What were you thinking right here? Uh, take him out. Go ahead and take him out. Were you thought, fearful? Were you respecting his power still at this point, or were you just uh, thinking about getting him out of there? Yeah, I did I did anticipate that he still had the power because when he, when he was throwing, I could feel the power when he was coming over me and riding me down. So I just went on, you know, and tried to put my combination together. This is the second knockdown, Terry. Well, that right there, I set him up with the right hand. Plop, right there. There it is. Right, straight right hand. That clock him right there. Was there any doubt in your mind when he went down that time that, it was, that it was you were the over. new champion? Yeah, I knew it was over there. I knew, I knew he wasn't going to get up from that shot. That was, a, that was a perfect right hand. How difficult was you to come back from the, from the mental torture of being stopped in the second round, your first try for a title? How difficult was you to get your confidence back? Actually, it was very hard. You know, uh, I got me a couple of fights, you know. My wife kept pushing me. My managers kept pushing me, telling me, go ahead, do it, do it, you know. Stay in, you know, stay in training, you know. And uh, I stuck with it. Got Congratulations me. to you. Thanks very much, Terry. Let's go back to Dan down at ringside. Okay, thank you.